Welcome to a new episode of 7 Minutes of Bond Locations. I'm Martin Mulder and this episode we will round up our Japan trilogy. Uh, a few months ago, uh, uh, in episode 6, uh, that featured Tokyo, from where we took a bullet train down to Kyoto uh, to take a look around there in episode 15. Uh, today, in this episode, we will end our journey with a look at the southern part of the country. The most southern of the main islands is called Kyushu. The island is mountainous and Japan's most active volcano, Mount Aso, can be found there. There are many other signs of tectonic activity, including numerous areas of hot springs. The most famous of these are in Beppu, on the east shore, and it's one of the places that Ian Fleming visited during his thrilling cities world trip in 1959. The volcanoes of Kyushu were also visited by Eon Productions when they were searching for locations that they could use in You Only Live Twice. It inspired them to, to give Blofeld a hidden lair inside a volcano. You, you probably know the story. The exterior would be a live volcano in Kyushu. We'll get to that later. Uh, while the interior, of course, was built by Ken Adam uh, on the Pinewoods back lot. When traveling around Kyushu, you will most likely arrive by Shinkansen, or bullet train, at Fukuoka. From there you can either continue your train journey, or take a rental car to explore the rest of the island. One recommendable stop is the city of Nagasaki. One of the main reasons Japan is so much different than the rest of Asia, is because the country closed its borders for hundreds of years, and thus could remain relatively pure. The only country allowed to actively trade with and from Japan were the Dutch, and they operated from a small artificial island in the Nagasaki harbor, Dejima. Most of that island is still there, though today it's surrounded by urban expansion. Nagasaki is of course also known around the world for being the second city to be hit by an atomic bomb in August 1945. The city has a very impressive atomic bomb museum, and a simple black monolith in the nearby Nagasaki Peace Park marks the explosion's hypocenter. Off coast Nagasaki, you can find an amazing Bond location, although it was only used in the long shots. Hashima, or more commonly known as Gunkanjima, meaning Battleship Island, was used in Skyfall as the exterior of Silva's hideout. Once the most densely populated place on Earth, Hashima is basically an abandoned mining facility. To avoid having to bring workers to and from the location every day, at some point a whole town was built on the tiny island. When the operation finally ceased in the 1970s, the island was abandoned in such a hurry that many left their belongings behind, much of which is still there today. In the decades that followed, the island slowly became a tourist attraction and making a boat trip from Nagasaki is a highly recommendable excursion. From Nagasaki you can travel eastwards uh, towards Kumamoto. Uh, nearby is Mount Aso, which is Japan's most active volcano. It's a beautiful area to visit, and well-maintained roads bring you relatively close to the action. You can even peek inside the crater and sniff the phosphor fumes that fill the air. Best thing to do from here is to choose Kagoshima as your final destination and just stay there for a couple of days. There, I can strongly recommend you to stay at the Shiroyama Hotel, which is beautifully located on a hill uh, overlooking the whole city. In 1966, cast and crew stayed here as well, and, and from that hotel you can then easily explore the, the surrounding Bond locations. One of them is located on the north side of the city. Shigetomi So is a monumental villa historically linked to the Shimizu clan. During the time of filming, it was a ryokan, or, or a Japanese-style bed and breakfast. And nowadays, it's mostly used as a wedding venue. Shigetomi So became Tiger Tanaka's house in the film. In downtown Kagoshima, the brief scene was shot in which Little Nelly takes off. 
The street has changed beyond recognition, but on a clear day you still have the same background as in the film, Mount Sakurajima. The active volcano, whose most recent eruption was only uh, one year ago, lies in the Kagoshima Bay and, and it smokes even more than I do. The recognizable slopes of the Sakurajima were used to show the shadows of little Nelly's pursuers. The epic helicopter battle was shot above Kirishima National Park, where a row of five volcanoes formed the backdrop of a spectacular landscape. When one of the helicopter's rotor blades severely injured cameraman Johnny Jordan's leg, it was decided to film the remaining part of the fight in Spain. A careful eye can easily spot the differences between the two landscapes. From the Shirayama Hotel, cast and crew were flown by helicopter to the top of Mount Shinmudake. This volcano, with a beautiful green crater lake, was used in the scene where Blofeld's base is discovered. In the wide shots, however, its neighbor, Mount Nakadake, was used. When I first visited Japan in 2006, I was struck by the beauty of the country and, and the kindness of the people. Uh, we also made it all the way down to Kyushu and I drove my rental car to, to Kirishima National Park and tried to figure out how long it would approximately take for me to climb to that volcano because that was my mission. It wasn't easy at the time because uh, I, I simply couldn't find anyone there who spoke English and who could explain that to me. So I finally found a hiking map in Japanese but it, it also had the, the, the walking times on it. And it explained that it would take me about one and a half hours to climb to the first volcano and then even a little more to the second one which is Shinmudake, the one that I was going after. So I was facing four hours of climbing uh, but I decided to give it a try anyway. And uh, the weather at the time was awful and we, we couldn't see a thing. So, uh, and it started raining after a while and after, after 15 to 20 minutes we, we just gave up and, and returned. Uh, determined to go to the top anyway, we, we tried again the next morning, which basically was my last chance, as my itinerary uh, forced me to move on. We started our climb while it was drizzling and foggy, but after 20 minutes we actually got above the low-hanging clouds, where it was hot and sunny. Proceeding was surely one of the best decisions I ever made. It turned out it only took an hour to reach the top, and it's one of the most amazing experiences of my life. The crater lake was beautiful and the sunny weather allowed for brilliant photos. In the years that followed, Mount Shinmudaka would erupt not once, not twice, but four times. And since then it's prohibited to climb up. The crater lake has been replaced by a muddy grey blob. So unfortunately, this spectacular location has changed forever. From the Shirayama Hotel, it's a one and a half hour drive south to the tiny fishing village of Akime. Here the world ends and time has stood still, it seems. The small town was used in the film as the island's village where Bond has a home with Kissy when he's disguised as a Japanese fisherman. That house is still there, as are many of the harbor features visible in the film. I'm over the island now. I've seen the fishing village. Nothing to report. Roger, we'll keep listening.
off coast you can find the island of Okiakime, where the cave scenes were filmed. When the sea is quiet, it should be possible to arrange a boat trip there from Akime, although you should not expect anyone to speak English there. The Ganzin So Inn was already there in the 60s and its owners will gladly show you the photographs from the filming days. When we arrived here during our 2017 uh, You Only Live Twice 50th anniversary tour of Japan, we were welcomed with open arms uh, by the population and even by their mayor. We were interviewed and photographed by the local press at the Bond Monument, an inscribed stone marker that was erected here in the 90s to commemorate the town's involvement with the Bond film. The Japanese fan community comes to Akima annually to celebrate the film. And recently they have erected even more signs explaining the town's role in the film. On one of these signs our 2017 visit has been immortalized with the inclusion of our group photo. Our visit to Akime rounds up my Japan trilogy. Uh, personally I think everybody should visit Japan at least once in their lives. The country has an impressive culture. Uh, on the one hand it's steeped in the deepest of traditions dating back thousands of years. But on the other hand, it's a society with continually shifting fashions and, and technological developments that constantly pushes back the boundary of the possible. A visit to Japan will be an experience you will never forget. If you want to know more about the Japanese bond connections, feel free to purchase our You Only Live Twice 50 Guide to Japan from our website or at Amazon. For those of you interested in joining a new tour, I have good news. I'm currently preparing a new tour of Japan for 2023. And like the one in 2017, we'll include four and five star hotels like the new Otani in the Shiroyama. First class transportation by bullet trains and buses. And of course, we'll bring you to all the locations discussed in this Japan trilogy. If you're interested in that, please subscribe to our newsletter at onthetracksof007.com to be the first to hear about this and other tours announced. Well, this concludes this episode in our Japan trilogy. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe you, you join us on our 2023 tour. Check out on the tracks of 007.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.